So what John is trying to do here, he's trying to show us that you, as believers in Christ, have the ability to show people God's love because God's love is in you. You are, you have everything you need to share the gospel. And he does that by first starting in verse 12 by saying, No one has ever seen God, but, and this is a big but, if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. See, God is invisible. He's spirit. You cannot look upon the face of God and survive. If you know the story of Moses, when Moses went up on Mount Sinai, He comes back down and he's got a veil over his face because he was in the presence of God and he is shining because he was in God's presence. We've not, nobody has ever seen God in his full glory. No one has truly seen his essence. In Colossians 1.15 We find out that though we have not seen God, we also know that we have seen God, which is kind of an oxymoron, but it's 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 true. Colossians 1.15 says he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Jesus, when he came, showed them God and shows us God. By taking a human body, Jesus revealed God to us. John fourteen nine. He was talking. Jesus is talking to his disciples, and Philip says, "Well, show me God. Show us God, the Father." And Jesus says, "Well, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father?" Jesus showed us who God is. But like I said, Jesus is gone. He's returned to the Father. And how does he reveal himself in the world? Jesus, God, reveals himself in the world. Now we know from Romans 1, 18 through 20, that God has revealed himself in nature. It says the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them. I mean, we can know about God. We can see him in nature because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, his divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made. So that man is without excuse. We can look out in the field and we can see things growing. We can look at the trees. We can look at nature. We can look at it and we can say, it is impossible that no God created this. This is not just happenstance. You cannot take the parts of a clock, put them in a bag, shake them up, put them down and expect to have a clock. Science has not, has not proven the non-existence of God. Now, I could do a whole sermon series on that. I may one day. But it has not proven the non-existence of God. It is not possible. It's too complex. You can't go from simple to complex. It just doesn't happen. Only by the hand of God. So God has revealed himself in nature. We know that. But see, in these verses of 1 John, the Apostle Paul, John says, We love one another. If we love one another, God lives in us. And his love is made complete in us. You see, men cannot see God, but they can see you and me. 